So here we are, season four, S super exciting as we continue this story. Where we left him was him and Jesus finally met again after three seasons of Shmuel trying to chase him down. So we're going to get to see how that meeting impacted Shmuel in season four. As as we're continuing in the series and more is unfolding, it's exciting for us as audience members because, you know, not only does more of the Bible get to be seen, but also it's done in such a grandiose way, talking about like what it means. Like we're, we're here on set to like physically have the locations that you get to walk around and the interaction with others rather than, you know, something that might be more typical. I'm just so glad that the show, not that it has been easy, and I'm sure we could always use more resources, but we certainly have more support and more to work with than we did when we shot season one. So to see us have the tools, the locations, the, the resources, the support to continue to tell the story in the best way possible. If there's any story that you don't want to be hampered by budget, it's this one. I feel like you're you're a connector. Like you you're, you know, constantly talking with others, you're serving on boards, you're doing all these things. The idea that this show has such an impact um, with audiences, like I, does that sit differently with you than maybe other art that you've done? Well, for sure. Uh, you know, the idea that I get to tell a story that means so much to so many people and isn't just something that people watch for entertainment, but they watch it to be, you know, to look, grow closer to their faith, to learn, to self-reflect. People don't just watch our show once. They watch it over and over and over because they're always looking for something more that, you know, could be there that could, that means something. And, so, uh, yeah, I hit the lottery when it comes to the kinds of stories that an actor could tell, because I don't think there's any story I'm going to tell that has a bigger impact on more people than this. Will you share a little bit about how you got here? I love your story because you were able to impact so many others, and then now it's your turn to be in front of the camera. Well, that's really kind of you. I'm very active in sag After, which is the union that represents actors and other performers. And so uh, the... The blessing I've had from being on the show has allowed me to be more active there um, because I've got the stability, I've got the, you know, the credibility um, as a working performer. So I can't express to you how much being a part of this has been life changing. And I don't think that it'll ever not continue to f feed me in incredible ways because, you know, when we do reach our goal of being seen by a billion people just to start, um, I don't know how that's going to impact my life. But I do know that. Um, I'm very lucky to be here, and I also know that I worked very hard to get here, and that it feels really great to be able to participate in something that makes my community proud. Do you have, like, uh, I'm, I'm sure the whole experience has been fantastic, but do you have, like, a, t uh, a moment or a piece of dialogue or something that stands out to you that is like, Kai, this will forever be be locked with me yeah that's so much pressure because I actually you know there's like there's the the line that I you know actually texted Dallas at one point and like said this line kills me and I don't want to share it because it's going to be coming up in the season but it was just awesome so I think you know in terms of stuff that people have already seen um yeah, I think one of my favorite scenes that I've shot is the scene with Nicodemus at the beginning, you know, it, where he and I are debating when you should just obey Torah and when you should have open eyes to see other things. And I just really love the debate. I love the fact that the student is the one who is happy, having like trouble breaking the rules and thinking beyond what's just written. And it's the teacher who's like, no, be open to new stuff or whatever, because normally it's the opposite. The teacher's like, these are the rules. And the student's like, no. So um, I just love in the language how uh, like intellectually stimulating and how fair and relatable that debate was between them. So that's what comes to mind. Yeah, that's a great one. I, I also feel like there's there's no way to know because these have been planned and they roll out, but it, it's interesting how each season seems to have uh, this correlation with what's actually going on with current events. Like, you know, the, this one's going to be about contrast. And I can't think of a more contrasting time, you know. So um, do, does any of the like current events play into your thoughts as you're filming things? One of the big themes that has that this show has just illustrated is that you could have all of the best of intentions. You could be doing such great things. And if people just don't want to like you, they will not like you. There's nothing you can do to make someone like you. You know, if, they're, if they've already judged you 
if they think you're the enemy, if they've put you in an enemy camp, if whatever it is, you could walk the old, an old lady across the street and they'll say you did it for attention or whatever. They will not give you credit for anything. It's like they have to dehumanize you if you are not part of their belief, whatever that is, their political belief or social belief, whatever it is. So, you know, Jesus is out there doing some good stuff. And for some reason, people are not getting with the program. Doesn't seem like whatever he, it doesn't seem like anything he does is going to change some minds. And there's something for us to learn from that, you know, like we shouldn't dehumanize each other.